My name is Christine Nanjala, Assistant Director of Public Prosecutions and Head of uh, Prosecutions at Makadara Law Courts. So amongst one of the files that we received, and that was about, uh, I think that was about in July, June, there had been a con there has been a, there, there was a conflict that was going on at Huruma, at an area known as Kiamaiko. And in this area we've got um, people from the same community, they're called the Burji, the Burji community. And what is interesting about this community is that half, part of them are Christians, then part of them are Muslims. And they're all related somehow. The community ni moja, wasilamu wa Burji na wasilamu wa Kristo wa Burji. Ni hawa ni shida ndi onyeko wenyewe. The Muslims went and attacked a, a church and destroyed property in a church. Now when the Christians saw that the Muslims had done that, they retaliated by going into a mosque and destroying the property in a mosque. So there was a lot of fracas for about three days and the police arrested about um, over 150 people. And we still had that question hanging over our heads. What will be the impact of charging? Then diversion seemed was the only way that was logical to dispose of that case. Na sisi pia kama viongozi ya jamii ya waislamu na wakiristo, viongozi ya jamii ya burji, pia kulikuwa na wazee wengine wakiborana pia, tukafika pale kwa tinini. Tulizungumza, hatuku angalia utafoti ya dini. Tuliangalia umuhimu wa jamii yetu ya burji, na tumiangalia umuhimu ya salama ya kia maiko. Tukasema, wacha tui kitu tu, tu handle, tuchukue kama viongozi. We were able to reach an agreement here and we agreed that number one, both communities are supposed to hold the peace. The Muslims and the Christians are supposed to hold the peace. And this will be done by ensuring that they have fortnight meetings with the police officers at Huruma police station. Number two, they're supposed to hold peace gatherings where both Muslim and Christian religious leaders will address the youth in that area. Kama mimi community leaders, nilemesimama mbele yake, ufisini mwake, nikamambia, ili maneno madam, awata rudia tena. Nitatimiza hii sharti, masharti yako, na nitamaliza, na nitatengeneza hii jamii awe kitu kimoja. Kama siyo njia mzuri, saa hii hawa vijana miyamoja hamsina saba. Maybe paka waleo, pengine wengine wako kwa tika seli. Na sisi pia tumefurahia na itaenda kuzaa matunda mzuri na itakuwa ni njia mzuri kwa sisi na kwa wale ambaye watakuja kujua hiyo njia na kuiweza kuifata. The beauty of diversion is that if, if it doesn't work, you can always go back and uh, prosecute it in court. The role of prosecutors is not only to prosecute but to find solutions um, that can help, you know, communities. So these are communities living in, in an area that is very sensitive, especially when it comes to religious matters, and um, the solution would not necessarily be to prosecute them, but to find uh, alternative um, um, resolutions to the dispute that they had. So far, Kia Michael has been silent up to today. You see, people are beginning to embrace alternatives to prosecution. People are beginning to embrace the various other facets, things that people need to start thinking about. And if this goes on and the momentum is kept up, I believe we'll have a totally different prosecution service in the next few years. We want to see courts use more of non-custodial options. We are working closely with the ODPP. ODPP has developed a policy document and guidelines and we have been involved all through and even the few steps in terms of uh, implementation, uh, our officers are involved. It would benefit uh, the community because uh, even where uh, mat such matters go through the court process, we know in this country that uh, conflict resolution goes beyond the court. The decision to charge or, 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 or prosecute rests entirely on, 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 on them. The only way you can be able to make that decision is if you're independent, without being afraid of uh, consequences in the sense that, uh, you know, um, uh, that at the end of it you've made a judgment um, that is, is, is fair. We do have our guidelines 
uh, having followed uh, the guidelines, uh, I would encourage that very much. The fact that we've delegated and we trust the prosecutors, then they should be able to make, make, make that decision. Uh, whatever decisions we make as the ODPP, um, we will stand by. When I sat down and I was drafting this diversion agreement in the middle of the night, I was asking myself, hmm, what does this mean? And you know, you're going back to your law of contracts and you're telling yourself it must be binding. So let me look at this like a contract. Then I sat down and I said, at least I know I went to school, I'm a lawyer, I'm an advocate. So what are the rules of contract? And you know, you, it takes you back to basics. And uh, since the court agreed and took it in, I think it met the standard that was required. <laughs> I have had no complaint about it. But I think it's a document that I'll, I'll put out there and let everyone critique and tell me maybe I'll have done this or added this or removed this or done this. I think it needs to get out there and let everyone critique.